Hello everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here and this is the 12th video in the building and launching a real Django website series. The link to the last video is there and you'll know by now that we've built the website, we've got the domain, we're now ready to step into the interesting part which is putting it into a production server and click and go so that people anywhere in the world can visit our domain, our address, our web address and see a working website. Okay, so this is where it gets uh, interesting in my eyes. So we're going to be using DigitalOcean for this tutorial and we'll be um, setting up a server and they call them droplets. So if you look at my screen, um, you'll see that I've already logged in. You will need to set up an account with DigitalOcean. It doesn't take long. You can sign in via Google, which is nice and easy. That's how I do it. Um, and once you're on here, you want to set up a new droplet. You can see that I've already got one. I'm not going to stick this project on that droplet I'm going to stick it on a new droplet and if later on in this tutorial I decide to put the user app onto a different server we can actually put it on a different droplet and that will demonstrate that you can actually do that by putting one project or a module of your project on one server and you can then take another module from your project and put it on another server and and break it down and then um, render those projects in the way of subdomains probably doesn't make much sense but as we get through the tutorial you will see what I'm talking about so let's go and set up a brand new droplet so once logged in you've got droplets on the left hand side here but you've also got a little green button at the top here click on that and you'll have this pull down list um, I will be blurring quite a lot of this out during these tutorials um, because I'll be doing a lot of work on the droplets and configuring them that this did coding and did demo.com will both be websites that you can visit and I don't really want the IP addresses and API keys and things like that to be in the um, the World Wide Web so expect a lot of blurring out droplets click on that the data center that I selected for the original droplet is London but we in this instance we want Ubuntu we will have a basic plan now it defaults to 48 pound a month or 48 bucks a month uh, I'm just going with a cheap and cheerful. We don't need anything. In fact, regular Intel with SSD. We don't need anything fancy for this, really. I mean, some of this is quite powerful stuff. Uh, our website is going to be quite low key in, in comparison to some projects. So regular, $5 a month. We're not going to add block storage. Uh, the other droplet that I've got is in London because I'm based in the UK and that's the closest data center. Um, do you know what I'm going to go with? I'm going to go with Amsterdam on this one. So I'm going to have two different data centers. VPC network, leave as is, select additional options. No, none of that. We will have password. So keep password ticked. We'll be um, SSHing to, we'll be using Mobile X term. I've got a link to a video of how to download Mobile X term just up here now. Uh, we'll be using Mobile X term to SSH to the server. So we will use an SSH key that will generate using the command prompt on a Windows machine. But when we first log into the server, we'll be using a password. So keep password ticked. And let's set up a password. There we are. Finalize and create how many droplets deployed. Da, 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 choose your host name. That's fine. Add tags. Do we want to have a backup? Drop, yeah, why not? We'll have a backup. It's $1 a month. Create a droplet. And that's all there is to it. In, in, in terms of creating a droplet, that's all you've got to do. Okay, right, so we've now got the two droplets. So the main project, the whole project that we're going through now, we'll put in the London data center, which is this one here. And when we break the project down, we'll put the other bit into the Amsterdam data center. Uh, we don't need to select this. We need to go back into create. And we now need to click on domains and DSS, DNS. Enter the domain name. So this all depends on what you've bought. In our case, it's diddemo.com. And add it to, just select add a domain. Domain, da, 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 da. yeah, add domain. There we have it. So diddemo.com is in didcoding.com. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold the phone. 
Let's ask because decoding is the is the project. That's fine. It's absolutely fine. Right. So let's go into diddemo.com. So if you're back into your um, dashboard, you can see the domains is here. So I've got diddecoding.com, which is my main website, and diddemo.com here. If you do go to decoding.com, it's just a coming soon page. I haven't done anything with it yet. I'm building it. So diddemo.com, when you configure it, it already has some name servers, okay? And that's about it. What we now need to do is we now need to add some um, other bits and pieces. So if you follow the instructions here where it's on A, you put an at symbol and then you choose the data center or the, the drop that you want to point it to. Remember we said we wanted to go to London on this one. So we'll go London, click create. Then you do another one where you go www. And then select London. Okay, so we've got those two. Now what we want to do is set up our MX servers. MX servers are, the, are for emails. So that's how you handle emails and servers. And you can do them manually, but with Gmail and um, DigitalOcean, you actually just have a button here that you can put add Gmail MX servers. And there you go, they're all of the MX servers that you're going to need for Gmail. But uh, what you'll need to do is, we will need, now need to go to the admin.google.com and you'll need to get, when, when setting that up, you need to get a, um, a text string that they give you to add a text link into your um, server, a TXT file. So we'll do that. We'll go. We'll do that in this tutorial. <laughs> Excuse me. And I think that's it. No, we now need to go back into iPage. So I used iPage to set up the as, as a registrar to set up my domain. So we now need to point the name servers from iPage over to DigitalOcean. So if you click DNS and name servers on the left hand side here in iPage, it will take you to the DNS and name servers. Now it comes with two, it's got NS35 and NS36. To point these name servers at DigitalOcean, you need to have three. And three are NS1, NS2 and NS3. So we'll edit, so it's ns1.digitalocean.com, NS2, NS3. So edit NS1 dot digitalocean.com I'm going to copy that across submit the change edit so it's name ns is name server submit that change and lastly we want change that number one to a number three. I think that's it. Oh, typical, right. <laughs> Plonker, right. So I get ahead of myself sometimes. You've probably noticed that. Add a name server. You don't want to edit the one you've just changed. And you want to change this one to three. So now we have three name servers on iPage pointing to our new host which is DigitalOcean or the new server on DigitalOcean which is a droplet and it's NS1, NS2 and NS3. So if we go back to DigitalOcean there, everything's done. We've already got the name servers here on DigitalOcean. We've got um, we've got two A's there. Right okay so we've got decoding.com which directs to the IP address of the server. And then we've got all of the MX servers that are configured just by clicking that one little button in DigitalOcean, which is very handy actually. And now what we need to do, we need to go into admin.google and we need to set everything up. So we need to verify the domain. So if we go and click on verify domain, welcome to admin console, verify dig demo.com so if you click on verify it will say this will take nearly 60 minutes and it probably will so we won't go we'll just do what we need to do and then we'll just call it a day on this tutorial but it does work uh, before you can start using Google Workspace we need to do a quick check to make sure that you own the domain diddemo.com text verification is the method that will be used click continue okay so let's add a verification let's add your verification codes so it comes up with a text 
string here, which is a text record that we need to have in our server. So if we copy that, we'll click on TXT in DigitalOcean and it will allow you just to paste your string in there. Enter the host, so it's at, so it's at diddemo.com and create a record. That is all you should have to do. Go back into admin console, go back on there and verify domain. Verifying your text record for didcoding.com. You can close this and it, it says it's going to take five more minutes. So that is it essentially. We've done as much as we can now without firing up our mobile X term. Well, this is the second time I've had to do an edit on a video on my YouTube channel. Normally I just either do it in one take or I, I do it in one take and then do snippets. So I, the last two videos, I've, I've closed the video down and I had to do another record because I've forgotten to do something. It must be my age. So we got to the point where we were verifying our um, admin, our ad, admin console on Google. And it was the same come back late, it was five minutes. But I thought, you know what, let's just verify it and go through them steps. So you can see now that we're 33% complete and we've verified did demo. That's because we've got that text note in our server. So now it says create a new user. Well, if you remember me saying that I wanted to change my name in admin because it said B-O-B-Y instead of B-O-B-B-Y and I want another account for info at did demo. So let's try and do that. So let's click create. Add a new user. No license is available for that user. There you go. Um, that's peed on my parade. Never mind. I think what I have to do is go to iPage and actually request a new user for my reseller. There you go. Please contact your reseller. So I need to go to iPage and go to the help desk and ask for a new user. That's not a big deal, right? So I'll, I'll go about doing that. Not in this tutorial. Um, and was there anything else on there? If we go back. It says activate Gmail on Digco, so activate. Uh, there we go, we've activa activated uh, Did Demo. So now I should technically be able to go to Gmail and send emails. So that's all good. I'll stop it there. Thank you very much for watching this video. It's always helpful. Please subscribe and please like, and I'll see you in the next video.